So this will be part 3 of our React tutorial and today we are going to be talking about JSX. So this is very important. Again, I want to remind you the direction we are going. We are simply trying to create a React UI application that is going to connect to this application that we already built or that we are currently building and be able to fetch data from this application. Now this UI you see right now, we are building it using Bootstrap and jQuery. I want to build the UI using React and then we can see how it compares, how difficult, how easy and how user-friendly a UI build with React can be compared to that build with Bootstrap. We also learn how to connect React to some other system built in Spring, built in, in any other application. So I'm going to close Spring Boot and we are going to start with React. In case you've not followed this tutorial on building this fleet management system, if you scroll up this page, you can see where the tutorial is. It's very easy and it's a step-by-step -step tutorial. Please follow it and make sure you follow along in building this application. We've not completed it. We are still in the process of building it. Again, if you are joining me for the first time, you've not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe by hitting on the subscribe button because this is where you learn. This is where you get any update I make uh, about anything at all in software engineering database you can easily get support from me because this is what I do and I'm always there to help you so subscribe to my channel leave me a comment and also like my video share it around that will kind of support my channel and we make sure that the the learning process and the knowledge sharing continues to, to move on so now in the last class we talked about components and let's see where we stopped so this is where we are at this point we created two components, a class component and a functional component. So at this point, I'm going to kind of move any, any component I'm creating, I'm going to move it into a folder. So let me create a new folder called components. Okay, so the two components we created, I'm going to simply drag and move it into the component Yes, I'm going to move it and it's going to simply rewrite the import statement to reflect the directory structure where we have this component. So I'm going to say yes, update and I'm going to move the welcome as well into the components folder, move and uh, yes, update. Okay, so let's now go to our class for today. What is JFX? Again, as I mentioned, my classes are always uh, practical classes, so I'm not going to talk too much about the theories. Meanwhile, JSX is simply a way to kind of combine JavaScript with XML. That's why JX, JSX means JavaScript XML. So we are simply kind of combining the two to make us write code that will be very easy to read. It even simplifies writing your code and make you write very neat and simple, uh, um, fewer lines of code if you learn, if you know how to use JSX. And interestingly, it is very, very, very easy to use. So we are going to write something in JSX and write something in normal JavaScript and let's see how, how it works out. So I'm going to create uh, a component. Now you know how to create a component. I'm going to create a new component inside the component folder. So I'm going to right click and say new file. I'm going to call it thanks.js. So I'm going to call it thanks.js. Okay, this is a component I'm creating. Uh, yeah open and as you know the first thing we are going to do so is to import react from react okay so i'm going to simply use the arrow function um have i talked about the arrow function uh let me see so let me open the welcome.js i don't know if i've talked about the arrow function so please um for now, let me not distract from this class. So let's let's just continue. Later, I'm going to devote another class to our function. So meanwhile, this is a functional component. So why I'm talking about the arrow function? This is also uh, a functional component. So this is a function written in another way called the arrow function. So for now, let's just take it the way it is. So I'm going to say cons things i equals specify open and close and specify the arrow and okay so what I'm writing now is JSX syntax so return 
Now the GSX syntax is not all this. I've not written anything about GSX. So what the next thing I'm writing now is the GSX syntax. Okay. So it simply says div and div slash div. So something is actually not right. Okay. So. So anytime you don't get IntelliSense, know that something is not right. So let me correct it. So I'm going to come here, return, return and specify, open and close. Okay, perfect. So, um, yeah, I think we are on track. Um, perfect. So I'm going to return the, okay, so you can see it's working perfectly fine. So I'm writing, I'm writing, um, I'm using JSX syntax now because I'm writing XML inside JavaScript. So I'm going to say H1 and I'm going to say thanks Kainson for the lessons. Okay. So let's just put it this way for now. You can use any other thing, any other text you, you want. So I've written this functional component uh, at this point and I'm going to now include it in the UI by going to the app.js and as you know I'm going to simply import it. Uh, remember we need to export it. Exports, exports default things. So the name of the function, okay this is fine, you already know. I'm going to come to my app.js and I'm going to import it right there. Import Thanks from uh, slash components slash. Okay, so I imported it into the app component. And now I'm going to simply include it here. So I'm going to say thanks. Okay. All right, so I've included it in the app component so that it can be rendered to the UI. Okay, so I'm going to save everything, file, save all, and it's going to recompile, and I think everything should be fine. So let's go to check. So you can see it says, thanks, Kainson, for the lessons, okay? Now, one thing I want to give you as an assignment, please try to do it. This function I wrote, which I called an arrow function, rewrite it in a functional way without using arrow function. Simply uh, use the, the same way we did in case of welcome, write a function, thanks, and write it to return what we already have, okay? Later we are gonna talk about the arrow function in a, in a different place. So take note of how the return statement of the of the of the JSX, so it's simply a simple uh, XML file, XML syntax uh, formatted tags return, as you can see right here. This is JSX. Let's now write it without JSX. Remember, JSX is not mandatory. You can actually write your component, your functions, and your code without using JSX. It's not mandatory, but it simplifies things a lot. So let's write without JSX. Okay. So, um, again, as I mentioned, this is where we have your the GSX. So I'm simply going to comment this. I'm going to comment it out and write another return statement, this time without GSX. So I'm going to select and control K, uh, control K and C. Yeah, control K, C uh, comments uh, in control CTRL plus K plus C. That's for comments in um, in Visual Studio Code. All right. So again, we are going to write at uh, this time. We are going to write in using uh, without using the the uh, GSX. If we are writing without the GSX, and we are going, to, we simply are going, we are going to be using the create element method of the React library. The create element method simply creates the XML for us. In JSX, we are writing the XML by ourselves, but if we are not using JSX, we are going to be calling React create component method for it to do this for us. When we call this method, this method expects 
not less than three parameters. Now the first parameter specifies the HTML tag. So this is the first parameter that specifies the HTML tag. The second parameter specifies the properties. For instance, ID of the, of the tag or the class of the tag or whatever. And the third parameter specifies children tags uh, or children elements, children elements of this element. So let's write it so that you can see exactly how it is. So I'm going to simply say uh, return, return, um, let me just, react.create element, okay? So we are going to be passing three parameters, okay? Parameter number one is the tag we want, the parent tag. So for now we have div tag. Do you want some attribute for this div tag? Yes or no? Let's say for now we don't have, we don't need any attribute, so we specify no, okay? And the next parameter is, is the children of this div tag. The children of the div tag is simply h1, right? So let's see, we have div tag and we have a child element which is h1. And to specify this h1 attack, we still need to call again react.create element. So I'm going to say react dot, dot create element, okay? And you specify this div tag h1. <coughs> Okay, and you specify uh, again the same way it's kind of recursive. So I specify any attribute you want for it that we don't want any attribute. I will now specify the text we want to appear. So I'm going to say uh, thanks again. Let me say thanks again. Okay, all right. So at this point, these two items are the same. So we have React as create element, the first tag, React as create element, the, the second the child tag, and then the content of the child tag. So I'm going to save and rebuild, and let's see how it goes. And now let's talk about the, the difference between the two. So I'm going to save all. So it should be fine. So I'm going to go back to the page. So you can see it says thanks again. So it's working perfectly well. This time we, are, we did not use JSX. But under the hood, the create element actually uh, generates the XML, the HTML tags for it for you. Now, so what is the difference? Let's let me uh, kind of okay. So I can't uncomment because I don't want to have errors. So we have this line here, and we have all of this. Okay, we have all of this. Now we have two tags: the the div tag and the H1 tag. What if there are many child tags? Let's say ten of them. You have several nested um, React.create element. You continue to write it like, like that way. So I'm going to I'm going to comment this again. Control K C, and I'm going to take out this Control uh, K C. Oh no. So we have this. So you can see that this is simply an XML uh, formatted text, right? You are simply returning an XML formatted text, and this is really very, very easy. So what I can recommend you too, because I'm not going to spend time talking about the syntax, you simply have to practice by yourself. And at this point, I gave a quiz, uh, says modify the component to display kinds on with underline. So basically. I want you to display Kindson uh, using on the line. On the line, my name Kindson means that you need another another tag, which is u slash u tag, as I mentioned here. All right. So let's talk about now the the null. That is the second parameter. So basically, uh, I'm going to kind of comment this again. Control K C, and I'm going to release this. Okay. All right, so now instead of having null, we want to give the, the, the div tag an attribute, an ID attribute. So to specify it, you simply use curly braces and I need to give it an ID attribute of, uh, let's say, greeting, right? So 
it means that this div tag will simply have an ID of greeting. So I'm going to save everything and let's check. So everything is fine. I'm going to go back. Uh, if I go to the console, if I go to the console, we can we'll be able to see. If I go to console, we should be able to see. Um, let's see. Okay, so this is fine. So if you look at, um, hold on, hold on a second. Let me uh, find out where it is. Okay, so if we go down here, we have ah, uh, we have okay. So um, okay, so this is where we are. I don't know if I can increase the font. So if you look at the uh, div tag, we have greeting, we have thanks again, we have thanks again, we have div ID is equal to greeting. So this ID is equal to greeting specifies the 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 um the attribute which is the second parameter now this h1 tag let me add an attribute let's say the class on the head for for the h1 tag or let me add um, a second attribute to the uh, the div tag so let's go and add an attribute another attribute all right so um so i'm adding a second attribute here i'm going to say class is equal to my class now class is equal to sorry so it's not equal but a semi uh, a column so i'm going to save everything save all okay so if i go back to our page you can see uh, that it gives it gives an error message let me see we have an error message that says invalid dom property class right the reason is because the class that we normally use every time uh in in in, in CSS is a keyword in JavaScript, so you can actually use it. So what we are going to use, instead of using class, we are going to use class name. Class name. So if I save everything at this point and save all, so if I go back to the page, you can see that there is no more error. Everything worked perfectly well. So if we go back to check, so let's drill down to check and go down. You can see, uh, let's go to, okay. So you can see div class is equal to my class. So in as much as we use class name, it also resolve to class CSS uh, class keyword, okay? But we can't use it in the JavaScript code uh, we are writing. So all of this is about learning JSX. So let me, let's look at a few exercises I'm, uh, I, I gave. Um, some keywords are a bit different uh, in JSX than in regular HTML. For example, the class is replaced by class name. This is a typo. For is replaced by HTML4. So you don't you don't actually need to be learning all these differences or all these changes between normal HTML and um, and JSX. But we are going to learn it as we go. But it, uh, JSX uses camel case naming convention. Okay, so I give some examples right here. All right, then come some exercises. Now this is for you to do because I cannot continue to be doing this for you every time. You need to practice yourself. You need to get strong trying to do something. Convert this JSX I wrote here. Convert it to so convert this code to JSX syntax. So this one. The second one, convert the code below to JSX syntax as well. So this is exercise for you to do before we go to the next part. I'd like to thank you for viewing. I'd like to give you a thumbs up if you've gotten to this point. If you've not followed the previous class, uh, please go back to do it. And also the, the lesson of um, the, the tutorial on fleet management we are building using Bootstrap, jQuery and Spring Boot. Please make sure you follow along so that this will be a seamless um, uh, you can move seamlessly from Spring Boot to React and in this way you can get hold on, on different technologies and be able to build applications very easily. I remain kind on the Tech Pro and I'm always there for you.